Dr. Germanowski, Nurture Nature Center, after the recent flooding in 2004, 5, and 6, heard from a lot of people who referred to these recent storms as the 100-year storm and portrayed them as rare events that weren't likely to happen again. We understand the 100-year flood is a complicated term. Can you explain that a bit more to us? Sure. Um, you're exactly right, Rachel. These weren't the 100-year flood events. Um, that's a common perception. The, the problem with the term, I think, more than anything, is that people tend to think that the 100-year flood portrays the uh, frequency with which flooding occurs. So you would think that you're going to have a flood every 100 years or that there's a 1% probability of flooding occurring. But in fact, the 100-year flood is just a particular size of flood that we've uh, used for planning purposes. Uh, many flow events are floods, but smaller than the 100-year event. And so the three floods that you mentioned in 2004, 5, and 6, uh, they happen much more, floods of that size happen much more frequently than the 100-year flood event. Um, the, the Hurricane Ivan event, for example, recent reanalysis of flood frequency data on the Delaware here show that that flood has a, a frequency of uh, 20 to 35 years. So much more uh, frequent than, than people realize. Uh, likewise, the April flood, which was a, a tremendous flood, a devastating flood, uh, that has a, a, a frequency of 40 to 70 years. So the 100-year flood uh, line or boundary or the 100-year flood event is just a particular flood event uh, that, um, that, that certainly is going to flood a large portion of the floodplain. But m many of these smaller flood events will flood significant parts of the floodplain. So if you live along the river, uh, you can be flooded by many different flow events that are smaller than the 100-year event. And uh, in many cases, as we've seen with these recent floods, they're quite damaging. Uh, the, the largest flood that we had prior to these three uh, most recently was in January of 1996. And that flood uh, has a high frequency, uh, smaller than these three, yet damaged a significant amount of property. So flooding occurs quite, quite commonly in this river, as, as is true of all rivers. Uh, if we look at data here that shows the, the highest discharge for each year from 1923 to present uh, at, at Belvedere, just upstream of Easton, uh, we see that there were a, sig a significant number, seven significant floods. So if we look at 1923 to 2009, say, uh, we've had a flood on average once every 13 years. So flooding happens much more frequently than uh, once every 100 years or than the 100-year flood event would suggest. Uh, many, many flows between the 100-year event and a non-flood condition are flood events. The other thing to keep in mind here is that we get fixed on the 100-year flood event for planning purposes, and it leads us to believe sometimes that that is the major flood. And the fact is, conceptually, rivers have 150-year flood events, 200, 500-year flood. So there are flood events that, that are going to occur much less frequently, but are going to be orders of magnitude more devastating. And so I think when we think about planning for, for flooding or utilizing the landscape next to the river, we have to realize that in most cases, there are events that we haven't really even imagined uh, effectively that are hydrologically possible, and in fact, they're hydrologically probable. So uh, there are a whole range of floods larger than the 100-year flood that most rivers uh, will experience through time. And particularly here in, in uh, eastern North America, we've only been here for a few hundred years. And so we really don't have a good, a good uh, sense from experience of what the major events that are possible uh, in, a, in a river of this, of this size. So effectively, for property owners who live near waterways, the 100-year floodplain is not a very effective or useful tool for them for determining their risk. That's what I'm hearing you say. And something else that occurs is where they're located in context of the terrain of the land around them is also going to make a big difference. Something That's something that a regulatory map isn't going to show, correct? Oh, absolutely. Again, as I said, if you're in lower, lower standing portions of the floodplain, uh, the frequency that that property will be flooded is much higher than the 100-year flood event. And of course, the, the magnitude of flooding that any individual is going to experience will be much greater. They're going to have higher flood levels in their property. Uh, and so in terms of trying to plan for flooding, if you only 
consider the 100 year flood event to give you a sense of how of how of what the flood hazard is or how often you're going to experience flooding um, you're going to learn the hard way that there are many other discharges or flow events that are lower than the 100 year flood that to your particular site to your particular property is still a devastating flood uh, and as i said uh, in in just in the delaware uh, basin here in the middle delaware here near easton um, we've had seven damaging floods uh, since 1923. So um, flooding actually does occur, our experience tells us. It happens much more frequently than once every 100 years, as the 100-year flood event would suggest. We have all seen those pictures from the 1955 flood of record that you have noted mm -hmm. on your chart here, and it's hard to imagine that the water could get any higher than that. Could it? Oh, it, I mean, it was obviously a devastating flood, and the photographs uh, bear that out. It's, it's, it's very hard to imagine when you look at the river system on any given afternoon. Uh, in fact, mo most of the time, right, the major flow events of the year are these small discharge events, which, which are contained within the channel. Uh, and so you get used to that scenario. And then you look at the photographs of something like Diane, and it's, it's, it's beyond your, your belief to imagine the river at that level. Uh, what's even more difficult to grasp but important to recognize is that uh, we'll have to, we would have to, at some, if, at some point in time, this, this scale is going to have to be expanded because the river is going to flood with a much higher magnitude, lower frequency event than even Hurricane Diane. Uh, these systems have it in them. Uh, we may not see it in any ind individual river, but when you look globally um, and look at the whole uh, range of possibilities. We see that many watersheds the size of the Delaware in similar climate terrain uh, or climatic regime have experienced much larger floods. And th this river is, is like any other river. Um, it has the capability of flooding much more than, than uh, what we've experienced. There are a number of, of scenarios that are easy to imagine with, um, with hurricanes sequenced one after the other or um, heavy rainfall occurring on frozen ground with, with rapid snow melt uh, when the snowpack is large. So it's, it's quite easy for scientists to, to um, expect larger flood events than, than even this one.